Welcome to New Economic Thinking. We're here with Professor Alessandra Casarecho from Bocconi University. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. What is New Economic Thinking to you? New Economic Thinking is just uh, seeing uh, problems, uh, old problems with new eyes, or uh, detecting new problems and having new eyes in tackling them. So this is what I would define as New Economic Thinking. So what is the problem that, is, that has focused your research the most? Um, I work, uh, as of late, um, a lot on gender issues. Mm -hmm. And uh, the research I presented here uh, at the INET conference has to do with uh, top incomes and the glass ceiling. I think that the word glass ceiling has more or less entered everyday discourse, mm -hmm. and we use it in order to refer to the fact that women find it uh, harder than men to move up in the earnings distribution, or they find more headwind uh, uh, when they try to progress in their career. And uh, generally, we just look at earnings. So what we want to do in our research is to shift our focus from earnings to income and try to understand how we can assess the glass ceiling or the extent of the glass ceiling by looking at income distribution. And what is new, I think, about our research uh, is that we are using uh, data uh, from tax records on mm -hmm. top income, so individuals who are at the top of the income distribution. And it is actually the first time that these data are used from a gender perspective or from a gender inequality angle. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that this is what exciting, let's say, about our research, that we are just using uh, new data to um, analyze uh, an issue which has been out there for a while, mm -hmm. which doesn't seem to be disappearing. And it's uh, just, a, uh, let's say, fresh data to address this issue and potentially to understand how to tackle it. So you're approaching it an old problem from a new perspective and with new data. But yes. for our audience, how would you define the difference between earnings and income so that it's easier to understand? Okay, so I mean, income is a more comprehensive measure mm -hmm. of uh, individual resources. So uh, earnings is just what you get from your participation to the labor market, but you could also get, for instance, some capital income, also in income from investment or rents. And um, you can be an employee or you can be a self-employed. So mm -hmm. if you are a self-employed, you don't get earnings, right. but you get of course, the remuneration. And so by looking at income, we have these different components, which all builds up, which all build up. And uh, um, we would like to understand how different sources of income uh, combine in generating or moderating um, inequality or mm -hmm. gender inequality. So our idea is that it may be not enough to look just at earnings, but it would be important also to add other components. So it's a more so global view. It's a more global view. It's a more comprehensive view, if you want. It could be the case that, for instance, we have gender wage gaps, but when it comes to capital, maybe women are more capital recipient than men, uh, than men are. Uh, or it could be the case that in the past, the women were more capital recipient because they were receiving inheritance, and mm -hmm. now it is uh, less so. And so we want to understand whether over time these different components of income have changed and how they affect the dynamics of gender inequality. So where are you focusing that re research geographically? Well, we have actually quite a few countries uh, from different parts of the world. So um, we have in our sample at the moment uh, two Scandinavian countries, so Norway and Denmark. We have the UK, we have Australia, we have New Zealand. And actually, New Zealand is the country for which we can go further back in time. We have data since the 1950s. Fantastic. And uh, we have Spain. And just this morning, we received data from Italy. So oh, I'm oh. also excited about working on my own country. Okay, <laughs> thank you. And anything in, in the Americas? Um, no, uh, but there's a reason why. Because given that we are um, focusing on tax records data, you need uh, to focus on countries which apply individual taxation. So the idea is that you need information separately for men and women in the US or France, for instance, they adopt joint taxation systems. It means that what you uh, pay taxes on is the family income. So just right. you pool the resources within the family before paying taxation. And so if it you makes want it to, harder. yeah, of course. And if you want to study gender inequality, you need to have information separately for men and women within the household. And this is what we can do for countries which have uh, individual taxation. So, what are your preliminary? Um, findings from the research that you've been So been it's, it's still work in progress, but we do have some findings. And uh, one way of uh, trying to understand whether gender inequality is there is just to focus on the share of women at the top of the distribution and mm -hmm. see whether there are different behaviors over time or for the different countries we have in the sample. So what we see is that uh, the share of women uh, at the top of the income distribution has increased. So take, for instance, the UK. It was uh, 
uh, the share of women in the top 10% was um, less than uh, 15%, and now it's approximately 25%. And um, the same holds if you look at the top 5%, but as you move up the higher percentiles in the top of the income distribution, this type of dynamics, this type of increase is no longer there. So we have seen some improvement in the lowest among the top percentiles. So think of the uh, the richest 10% of the population or the richest 5% of the population. But as you move up, say the top 1% or even the top 0, 0.5 or the top 0, 0.1%, the share of women has remained more or less constant over time. And low? And, and pretty low. And pretty right. low, yes, sure. And another interesting finding is that I mentioned before that we have uh, Norway and Denmark and then we have other type of country and I was uh, talking about the UK now. Um, although, for instance, Denmark and the UK are very different in terms of overall inequality. Denmark is certainly a country which has a lower level of inequality compared to the UK. Mm -hmm. When it comes to gender inequality, the behavior is pretty much the same, at least as it appears from the data we are focusing That's on. Very so in terms of gender inequality and the share of women at the top of the distribution, Denmark more or less uh, overlaps, if you want, uh, in terms of the figures that we have with, uh, with the UK. Did you find that in geography? So that could be the you know, example of two European countries. Did you find that in other geographies, from, from, for instance, from the New Zealand data that you have? Or, so you know? for the New Zealand data, uh, it's actually, I mean, New Zealand has an interesting pattern. As I said, it's one of the countries for which we can go further back in mm -hmm. time. And if we look at the early period, so 1950, 1960, actually you saw more women in the top 1% compared to women in the top 10%. That's very okay? Yes. But as we move closer to more recent time, this is no longer the case, and New Zealand behaves as the other countries do, and you see more women in the top 10% rather than in the highest percentiles. And somehow, surprisingly to us, the countries which shows the highest share of women in the top uh, percentile, so at the top of the distribution are actually Australia and Spain, which we didn't expect when we started up. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, as I said, it's preliminary work. We're still focusing on it, but these are, let's say, some of the findings that we currently that we currently have. So that's very interesting work. And how would you plan to take that forward? So, what's the next step in the research? So, I mean, there are different directions that we are um, that we are taking. So the first one is just to be as careful as we can with all the data in order to make them as compatible as possible so that our cross-country analysis over time is right. as reliable as it can be. And then we are adding further countries. So I mentioned before Italy, Italy. and we are also receiving historical data for Canada. So for Canada, we can go far back until the 1940s. Fantastic. Yeah, so this is, uh, let's say, in terms of the data that we have uh, available. And uh, another thing that we would like to focus on is just to understand more um, what has changed over time or what is different across countries in terms of sources of income. So if, for instance, we look at the UK, uh, for which we have data on the composition of income, we see that women are generally more capital income recipient compared to men, whereas men are receiving more of their income from earnings and the share of income that they receive from self-employment is more or less uh, uh, equivalent. Mm -hmm. We have similar data for Spain and what we see for Spain is that again we confirm that women are obtaining a larger share of their income compared to men from investment income. Mm -hmm. But this has, seems to have changed over time and now a larger share of income comes from wages uh, also for women. So it seems that there is somehow, I'm not saying that women are becoming more like men in terms of income composition. Mm -hmm. So this is something that we would like to explore That's further and um, let's say also try to understand what happens for the other countries that we have in our, in our sample. And obviously the increase of women in the workforce has some bearing in the in the research. for sure for sure and uh, uh, I mean you you let's say you see a more direct impact of the higher female participation in terms of earnings mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I mean for sure I mean the changes in the labor force participation that almost all countries although at different paces have experienced in the last uh, uh, 30 40 years uh, is another important dimension of gender equality or inequality actually I mean here we are talking about uh, top incomes mm -hmm. but another way of measuring gender uh, equality or inequality is that of focusing on employment rates. And so most countries still display a large uh, gender gap in terms of employment rates. And uh, so, I mean, this is another potential measure of, uh, of inequality, which is somehow also related to what we're And that will also differentiate terms. the different countries that you are, that are in your sample size. Yes, sure, right. sure, sure.
And what do you think that um, socially um, we, we can do to improve situations of taking it to a more normative side? You know, what, do, what are the proactive steps that societies can take? I mean, you've written about this, so. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that there are different uh, dimensions one uh, could focus on. And let me start, let's say, from the top, given mm -hmm. that uh, we, are, we are focusing, yes, on the top, but then we can, let's say, just uh, um, enlarge our, our view. Um, I think that some countries have done something in terms of improving the situation at the top of the income distribution by uh, intervening quite severely, if you want, and uh, adopting these quota laws, which mm -hmm. uh, tries to, let's say, promote or impose, in some sense, uh, more women in corporate boards. And, uh, and so they have been this, controversial in some places. They have been really controversial, and uh, they are still very controversial. Yes. <laughs> and uh, even in countries where they have been introduced, I mean, Italy is one of, I mean, yeah. it's quite surprising, but I mean, uh, because Italy is one of the countries for which you observe the largest uh, gender inequality, uh, especially compared to other European uh, countries. But it's a country which actually made the step and decided to introduce this law. It's a, on a temporary basis, so mm -hmm. it's just for three mandates of the board of the, of the, the boards. boards. And um, this is just, I mean, I see it as a step forward. I mean. Uh, being temporary, it means that it's not going to last forever. So you want just to somehow um, introduce, uh, new, introduce incentives. new incentives and just change, let's say, the starting equilibrium, which is not really, say, a competitive one, is right. rather a monopolistic one. So you want to break um, the monopoly, if you will. Yes, yeah, so to break to, to break it, and then from there we see what what happens. And for sure, in Italy, we have seen a strong increase in the share of women um, in uh, corporate boards, but this has to be the case because, I mean, it's well, mandated. But we are also doing some research to try and understand who these women are. And what's interesting is that there were fears that it will only be a very small circle of women who will take up all the places uh, because there are not enough uh, women who are willing or who have the capabilities to be there. And actually, this is not showing up uh, at all. At least that was so, the argument, right? Yeah, yeah, that was the argument against right. the, the adoption of, uh, of, these, um, of this type of... Uh, and in other places where, where, they have, where, where they started, do you think they have been successful? Um, these well, I, I mean, I, I think that the, the country which uh, was the, let's say, the forerunner Pioneer. is just uh, the Norway. Mm -hmm. And uh, indeed, there we see an increase in uh, the share uh, of women. And there is also some research saying that somehow um, there has been this, uh, this phenomenon of the so-called golden skirt, the mm -hmm. one that I was somehow referring to uh, before. So there were always the same women in the different uh, boards. And it seems that, I mean, one of the expectations for this, uh, for the introduction or implementation of this law is that, I mean, you are just making a change at the top, but possibly this should trickle down, right? Mm -hmm. And this is uh, somehow showing to be um, harder than one would, uh, would wish or would mm -hmm. hope uh, for. So in this sense, I think that, um, I mean, uh, all countries share a problem in terms of the presence of women at the top, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, different countries have different problems in terms of female participation. So which this are is separate a, problems. Which are separate problems. So this is just the, the, the thing, because it could be the case that you have countries, again, like Norway, where female labor force participation is very high, but even, I mean, in the absence of a law, even in Norway, you didn't have many women at right. the top, right? So I think that these are two really distinct processes. Uh, and uh, we can uh, hope that, uh, let's say, moving the top, uh, something trickles down and just helps also the, the bottom. It certainly does so in terms of promoting some role models. But um, I think that we should also focus, say, on the female labor force participation. Mm -hmm. And here, probably, um, I think that it is very important to focus very important to focus both on, um, if you want, household um, organization mm -hmm. and also on firms. In the right. sense that I think that it is mm, the interaction between um, uh, the way within the household, the two spouses, div let's say, divide the household yeah. chores and how the firm perceive that this division is going on that can place uh, or that can mm, create some obstacles so to... So the different social units have a, sort of an interaction. I think it would be, I mean, I, I think it's important that, uh, I mean, they influence each other, right? And so there are many feedback mechanisms. Uh, and also, I mean, the, the way uh, expectations are influenced, uh, both at the firm level and at the family level, are just intertwined. So I think that it would be important to act both at the family level, promoting as much as we can some uh, uh, sharing of responsibilities. Because, I mean, we know that most of the household 
household uh, duties are still uh, on uh, on women, so mm -hmm. something needs to be done there. But also in terms of uh, uh, firms, I think that more flexibility in the organization of uh, work would be um, important. Well, thank you very much, Professor, for sharing your work with us, and we thank wish you, you all the best. And are grateful for your time as well as for the efforts to bring uh, to bring all these new ideas into INET and our orbit. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much.